as it's the Christmas period, I thought instead of the usual book room, I'm going to go through a tour of all my books in my house. Well, maybe not all of them, but they're all in piles and rows on shelves and etc. So I'm just going to run through them overall, shelf by shelf, pile by pile. So let's just go through them. Now, I've some of these only just bought yesterday. So that's why it's in this pile. I thought, you know what? Comic Cavalcade. I bought this one at gosh, 20 quid. They've been putting quite a few of these old archive editions. I love them. Golden Age archives, always great. Now, I had this before, yet another one that I've had before, and I regret getting rid of. So I'm pleased I bought it again. Only three comics, but still great comics. And it was obviously Green Lantern, Flash, and Wonder Woman, the main ones. But they also had lots of stories of other people as well. So it was a real sort of mix of the, this one, I don't know which one this one is, and Black Pirate. So you've got the Black Pirate. Also, you've got some very unusual one. This is a Western one, a Minute Movies and so on. Lots of little unusual stories, but it just gives a, a there's no ads particularly. Well, there's a few ads obviously for the, the magazines themselves, but there's no ads for the rest of the thing. It would have been nice if they'd gone for them full on, give the whole sort of appearance of an old magazine, but still, love this. Three issues, pity they didn't go for a volume two. So next one, let's go for giant superhero holiday grant bag. Now I don't know why this wasn't 1976. Instead, they went for 13. Special collector's issue, 50p, and great little stories. It's also got this lovely story here, Tis the Season as well. So you can see the stories there, contents, 1976, and a really nice one with Black Widow. Really love that story. Not the story, the Ox story's fine, nothing wrong. Also, you've got this classic Silver Surfer story with the Hulk. And as always, they did this at the back, which is always nice. Bit like, uh, of course, the epic collections and Marvel masterworks and omnibuses, etc. They've included the covers there. Just always good to see. They're nice. UFO. Lots of people have been saying about this. People say it's brilliant, wonderful. People have been contacting me and said, why haven't you reviewed it yet? I will review it. I haven't read it yet. So, I mean, I read the stories quite a few years ago. This is, of course, Countdown. And it's got, now it's volume one, so obviously it doesn't include all the stories, I assume. But here you've got some of the obviously brilliant artwork, but also it's got introductions to lots of the artists. It's got sort of sections on different artists. And of course, whenever I flick through these things, I will not find a section. Oh, there's one. Here's one. This is quite nice. Let's just see this one. There it is. A feature, which I quite like. I think that's always a good thing when you bring out these books. So you've got some essays as well, which is brilliant. But good. I'm looking forward to read through that. Now, I'm probably going to have all my books fall on top of me at some point. So I'm going to spread it over a couple of, not a couple of videos, but I will join them all together. Otherwise, I suddenly, you'll suddenly notice me crushed. This one I have gone through before. I love this one. Marvel Classic Sticker Books. Luckily, the stickers haven't actually started to peel out or be damaged in any particular way. And I haven't used them. I should. It's terrible, isn't it? You buy this book and then you don't use it. Five double-sided pull-out posters. More than 200 vintage stickers maybe i should have bought two copies but still you've got some lovely ones there now some of them are obviously clearly a long time ago 1967 i think some of these 90, some are 1975 but you can really tell the difference when they suddenly change oh this one 1967 so you've got the hulk actually the thing i loved and always love these you've got these ones these are the old of course i just the avengers spidey thing and you can see the difference when you suddenly Go to the next page, of course, that's the 70s ones. You can def definitely tell. And also the prices, I suppose, are a big giveaway there because the other ones are 12 cents or 12 cents up there as well. They're not, obviously there were 10 cents ones earlier on in the 60s. This one, absolutely brilliant. I love Red Sonja. Absolutely. Gail Simon, Simon, I'm not certain. This is the complete one from Dynamite. Again, I've reviewed this one. I love this book. Absolutely full of really brilliant artwork. Let's just show an example there. Just absolutely great. I wish Dynamite would bring out some more massive omnibuses of Red Sonja. For some weird reason, they haven't. They've brought out a few, obviously, the collections and things, but I would love to see a few more of these really sizable, sort of chunky volumes. But still, this one's great. I love Kazar or Kazar. Not really certain how you call <laughs> All these years I've called them Kazar, Kazar. Changed my na the name all the time. So, Guns of the Savage Land. This is a Marvel graphic novel. I would love to see an omnibus collection of these. They brought out an omnibus, I think it was Kazar the Savage. I didn't buy it. 
I, was, I wasn't particularly mega enthused by those stories. Some were good, some were not, but there's a lot of the early ones, like Astonishing Tales, as well as Kazar, those sort of ones. I would love to see those, as well as this sort of collection as well. But sadly, they haven't done that yet. I don't know why. Maybe if you bring, they bring a film out with Kazar, then maybe they might bring out an omnibus collection or some epics. Even some epics would be really nice, or complete. But still, great little story. So that one, Kazar there. This one's a very unusual one. Now this one's a sale, and I love a book, 99p. You can't beat 99 This is Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet is great for lots of sales items. There's a lovely section of sales books. Sometimes you go there, it's much the same each week. But sometimes you suddenly see some gems, and there was some really odd ones. I don't know why. I was looking there, and they had loads of sales edition ones of some omnibus that were only just come out. And I was thinking, that's very strange. They've got the ones in there, and then they've got them here as well. I'm not certain why, but anyway. I wasn't particularly interested in buying them, but it still just struck me as slightly odd that they had those. But again, you can find quite a few items, like James Bond books. They often have them like 99 pence. And you think, well, that's quite a reason for 99 pence. Even if you're not particularly a super collector of them, I think they're quite decent to read on the train going back home. Quite often I'll pick it up and think, you know what, that's a good read. Charlie's War. Absolutely superb. They are really good stories as well. I've got a couple of volumes of these and they're great. And they also, quite often, weirdly, have different volumes every once in a while. You go in there and you see another pile of them. You think, oh, have I got that one or not? Still, they're good. Now this was absolutely brilliant. I love this one. Tintin and Alf Art. Most unusual, Alf Art. But still, what it is, is just behind the scenes. Literally, you really see the construction, the art, it's got the pencil sketch. I mean, this is just a absolutely beautiful, all the sort of basic, just roughs that he just did. I loved it. Absolutely, oh, it's got the script as well. All the way through it, this is just the start of a comic book and it's brilliant. Really beautiful, really recommended and it's reasonably affordable as well. So this is like, wow. You got, if you're interested in artwork, and comic books, I think this book is a must have. And it's got see all the tin tins on the back there. But it's an unusual one, an unusual. Maybe not for everyone, but certainly I love those sort of books. One of my favorite artists, Mike Allred. I love Mike, well actually, <laughs> there's so many artists I like. So I could say, oh, that's a favorite. Gil Kane, a favorite. Another one, Bill Everett. But this one, Allred, love his work. And this book is lovely. Of course, typical, tomorrows.com. I just love their books. So many brilliant books. And this one, of course, with Michael Wood, lots and lots of examples of his work all the way through. Now it's a soft cover, which is a pity. Maybe it would be nice as a hard cover. But this is part of their Modern Masters Volume 16. I can't say I know all the other ones before, but this one definitely was a must have. I think I've got another one somewhere else. You've got all, all the Madman there. You've got Solo. I love that one. That Solo one is really good. Ultimate Marvel team up. Uh, yeah, they're all great. And just one series I've never really bought, Ecstatic. Maybe it's good, I don't know. Maybe, let's check it out. This one, I love this one. Any of these sort of books are just absolutely wonderful. Now this, let's just show the, just brilliant. Ooh, the glue's coming, I can hear it sort of crack there. But you've got Batman there, just great. I love that zoomed in, sort of brilliant design, always great. So this one, it's, I think it's a chip kid, isn't it? No, Les Daniels, Les Daniels. But it's got lots of great examples. But like I, said, I can hear the glue sort of crack in there. Detective stories, you've got all the, of course, early ones there. Wings, uh, and those more examples. Also, you've got some original artwork there as well. Can't beat that. Beautiful book. Now, who's that by? That's by Chronicle Books. Chronicle Books, that one. There's also a Superman. Also, there was a Wonder Woman. And also the Shazam one. I think the Shazam one as well for that. Now this one I haven't read. One day I will read it. Got lots of people obviously love this one. For better or for worse. Now this is Complete Library, Volume 1, 1979, 1982. Now, don't really get many American sort of newspaper strips. So I'm certain the series was absolutely loved. But it's not one I'm familiar with. So I thought, oh, you know what? I was reading about it, I thought I must get it. And like I said, I haven't really sat down. I've read a few of them, but I can't say that I've read sort of that many. But it's still nice to have, and I look forward to at some point going through all those stories. This one I love P. 
Craig Russell, another one of my favourite artists. I love this. And I remember buying these when they came out, some of them in comic book form, and I, just brilliant. Library of Opera. Now, I think he only did three, so I don't know why. And they're all obscure operas. They're not sort of operas you sort of think, you know what? I don't think I've actually ever seen any of these operas actually live. Seen a lot of operas, but I have never seen any of these ones. So he's really gone for, or slow me. Yes. But not some, some of them are just, I think, really? I mean, I've never heard of that one. Someone's probably going to turn around and say, that's an obvious one, that's blah, 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 something else. But the artwork is just superb. I just love the stories and the art, of course. P. Craig Russell, just one of my favourites. I only got volume two and volume three, because now, weirdly, volume two. And again, some pretty unusual ones. Not all, you know, your standard operas. So, still, absolutely great. Again, brilliant artwork all the way through. Very unusual, that one. Actually, obviously, that's a very, looks must be. Doesn't, does it give a deep detail about the dates and things? Probably not. Oh, that must be 1977. Wow, that's quite a few years ago. But still, great artwork all the way through. Okay, anything by P. Craig Russell, I love seeing. And I would love to see... Volume four, volume five, volume six, whatever of those. I don't know if he did any more opera adaptions, but that would be nice as a series. And that's by NBM. This one I love. Alex Ross, just brilliant artwork. Chip Kid, Jeff Spear, and just amazing. All the way through it, just full of page after page. Now, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but it's just, I think it's just, the way he sort of looked, obviously, at the original Fantastic Four, number one, those sort of things. I love also those sorts of things, seeing the Fantastic Four there. I have no idea. Oh, human Torch. Invisible Woman. It's looking very slightly odd. But still, highlights from Marvel's issue number one. And it's just page after page of just truly brilliant artwork. Beautiful book. So Marvel City. Marvel O City. Marvelosity. I don't know. <laughs> However you say it, it is just one amazing book. Definitely, definitely recommend it. Now, I have never been a mega fan of Quinton Blake, but I watched a programme on BBC4 recently and they were just doing Quinton Blake. And I thought, you know what? This guy is quite amazing. I don't know how many pieces of artwork he's produced and just, just the sheer quality of his work. I thought, yes, I must really find out more. It's terrible when you, there's certain artists that you just sort of just ignore. And you really shouldn't because sometimes you think, and of course, you know, wow. Just artwork, loads of pages. And also this book is fascinating because it just obviously gives a lot and lots of examples as well as details about his working practice and so on. Just superb. Really recommended. Though sadly, this copy, for some weird reason, got really mangled as he went through the post. Well, I assume it did anyway, but it's just looked really, it was quite water damaged when I got it. But that's the trouble. It's been recently, the weather hasn't been great. So that was damaged then. I love this exhibition. Winslow Homer, Force of Nature. I don't know if it's still going. I think it's near the end of the National Gallery in London. Uh, but still, I thought it was just an absolutely amazing. Wasn't many people in there, which is always obviously quite nice, but sad at the same time. It's obviously you want it, every, millions of people were looking at all these brilliant artworks. And I just was so impressed with the artwork. I didn't really know what I was gonna see. I knew a bit of his work, obviously some of the famous ones. But I was just super impressed by lots of, and this of course got a lot of background details, pictures of other people's as well. John Singleton Copley. Not all the work was shown, obviously he, that, I don't remember seeing that. So it was obviously just his work, but still it's obviously giving some background details. Now I don't know, I mean that sort of thing. That was just great, some of the pictures of, but there were just so many great examples all the way through this. So I had to get the catalogue. I think catalogues, I'm always a bit wary about getting catalogues. Sometimes you look at them and think, you go to an exhibition and I've, met, I've got a membership. So i have not, obviously I can go anytime I want, but at the same time, then you start thinking, well, 35 pounds additional to buy the catalogue. So I quite often, and I really prefer them if they bring them out in nice soft cover like this. And so it's not too expensive. I can't remember this was about 15 or 16 pounds. And of course you get a 10% discount as well if you buy it. So that's always good. This one. Axel, oh, I can't, I'm not going to say his name right. Finnish, Finnish artist. Absolutely lovely. 
I love picking these up in my local Oxfam. Local Oxfam often has sort of like, you go in there and you find a book of Bulgarian artists or something from the medieval period or something, you think for £1.99 or 99p, you think, ooh, that looks good. Packed solid with some really beautiful artwork, also Art Nouveau, whatever. And this one is one of those sort of things. It's quite a thin little book, but still just full of just some, let's just turn to a page I can actually show. Yeah, something like that. Just really great artwork. Well, I was looking online for some of his books and they were quite expensive. And I thought, hmm, I suddenly was considering his work because I've read some other book about that sort of period. So I was really pleased to suddenly, oh, great. So that's always nice. And I like to say, those are the sort of books you, whenever you see them in a sort of art bookshop or Oxfam bookshop or something, you've got to buy. Because you know what? If you go back the week after, they will be on. I really love this exhibition. This was at the Somerset House, called the Old, called the Old Gallery. I love this. Fuseli and the Modern Woman. Really unusual, and I probably can't show any of it, but it's, I'm gonna show you something. Oh, let's just choose something there. But there's some really un, very unusual, and it was an absolutely staggeringly brilliant exhibition. Went with one of my friends, and I, we just really, really loved it. I just thought, Medusa of the Hearth. It's all these sort of sketches, drawings and things. It's not paintings, but it was just brilliant. Brilliant exhibition. And again, another one of those ones where I didn't buy the book at the actual exhibition. I bought it later. I thought, oh, there was one, I think 15 pounds or something, a bit cheaper. I thought, oh, God. you go and pay like 18 or so, whatever it is, 16 pound to go to the exhibition. And then you've got the catalogue as well. It's It does add a lot to the cost and you think, I've always wondered why they've never done special deals where you get the book and the exhibition. I would love to see that, maybe they do. But I always think that that would be a nice addition or maybe, I say, uh, the paper, they could bring it and paper back. That's, which of course this is. But still, this one is brilliant. Comic Art Price Guide. I really love this. This is the second edition and it's full of just tons and tons of examples of brilliant artwork all the way through. These comic book price guides are original art ones are just brilliant, I think. Now, they're a bit like the heritage catalogues. You get loads of the heritage catalogues. I've got piles of those. I could do a complete review of those. I've got whole shelves of those. They weigh a ton as well. But this one's actually quite a nice light one. It's also interesting to look at the prices. Prices, of course, completely meaningless because now, this is a few years ago, so they're probably completely different now. But it's still fascinating. It's got lots of pulp magazines as well. Again, no idea about the price. And of course, they're US. So you've got here also magazines and things. Many, of course, you'd never find probably in the UK or certainly not very easily. Bill Everett. Weirdly, they got that. There's no mention of him. There's nothing. I, you know, when you got that on the cover, you think, oh, there'd be an essay or something, you know, of Bill Everett. There's absolutely nothing. Why did they do that? Still, really good book. And on the back there, Square Trant, as it says there. This is a great one. Love this one. Comics Anatomy of Mass Medium. Really, really good read. Absolutely full of tons and tons of examples of Art of the Phantom. Also, of course, comic strips. Archie there. You've got Scooter and many, many others. Really love that one. That one's an unusual one. I think that's a, is that a, German, a German one. I don't know. There's some certainly very unusual artwork. Scarf. That's quite, uh, yeah, Modesty Blaze. Loads and loads of Jeff Hawke. Or well, certainly a European one. Fascinating book. I actually also saw one of the artwork, all the original covers by Crumb. I thought that was amazing as well. That was about 60 pounds. I thought, mm, no, <laughs> you can't buy everything. This one, Celia Paul. I went to the Lucian Freud exhibition. I bought this one. I absolutely thought, wow. And it's really fascinating read. Really, and it's got full of some great artwork as well. Just to definitely recommend it, Celia Paul, self-portrait. All Winners Squad, I love these ones. Anything that's like a coverless, I'm, I'm a keen fan of coverless comics. Just a pile of coverless comics. I go to a comic convention and there's a pile, I will be picking up loads of them, especially if they're like 20 or 30 pence, because I love the stories, I love the artwork. I'm not so fussed about the covers. I've got the covers in other forms, so it's still, so it's just, just a joy to read through this story. I love this one because, of course, it's the All Winners Squad. And uh, they just, they should have done more of those. I don't know why. They just did two stories. Oh, obviously, now we've got the All Squad, oh, loads of other ones. 
invaders, etc. But back then, not so many. And of course, you had Justice Society of America. Timely really should have done more of these sort of things. I wonder why they didn't. So odd. That's one question I don't know I've ever seen an answer to. Why didn't they do more of these sort of things? Sort of combination teams. Didn't Martin Goodman think, oh, you know what? Justice Society of America is doing well. Or Winner's Squad. Maybe that would be. Now, this is pretty amazing. This one's a James Jean. Very unusual artwork all the way through. Some very, I can't, I just have to be careful about what I can show. Some very, very unusual paintings and sketches. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But there's some that I probably, have to be, yeah, just choose very carefully. Very good book, Japanese one. Like lots of Japanese books, really suit. You can see it's a huge tome. Got all the pictures in the back there as well. All the details. Unusually done as a contents, but uh, or an index. I uh, just very elaborate artwork. Just beautiful. This one I love. I really uh, mega fan of 1951 Festival Britain. I don't know why, because I didn't go to it. No, I didn't. Leslie Jackson. Just brilliant. And I love the artwork all the way through the textiles. Just beautiful. Loads and loads of pictures from the actual exhibition as well. Loads of the rooms and all those sort of things. I just just fascinating. Just 1951, just I would love to have gone to that, but of course, probably a bit tricky. I wasn't born. This magazine I love. Not every issue. I have to say this one was okay, but isn't my favourite issue, but still. Great magazine, Aesthetica. I think that's how it's said. But it's always worth it. Just full of just some very unusual pictures. Lots of information about art exhibitions, books that come now. All sort of very surreal artwork. And I just love the photography. And not always. Not every single issue is brilliant. But I've got a good fair number of these magazines are just superb. And I love them. Absolutely. One time I used to get the digital one. But I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get the physical copies as well. So, always great. And another Quinton Blake one. This one is good. Now, I bought the other Quinton Blake one first. And then so I was looking online, I suddenly saw this one. I thought, oh, because this one is really covers and probably even better. Just such a great artist. Really, truly superb. I mean, I just, the programme on BBC4 is definitely, it should be still available on the iPlayer. Really worth checking out. So, Quinton Blake, really pleased I got that. Thames and Hudson, generally, most of their books are always good in some particular way. Now, I know then, but I, I love them anyway. I know they're not always loved by everyone, but I love them. Quinton Blake book, definitely worth checking out. And let's see if they've got any. Don't, I mean, how many drawings does he do? I mean, he must like literally millions of drawings a day. He's like churned up, and they're all absolutely, I think. Amazing, absolutely superb artist. I mean, just a simple look at that. Just a very, very, but yeah, that really just captures that person just in such an amazing way. Just using a biro. I love using biro for my drawings as well, but I don't think I could draw in a million years as good as that to make something looking that as good. So, Quinton Blake. This one, Punch Library of Humour. Really nice, Book of Love, 25 in the series and I don't know the period. I must admit, probably about 1900s. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a date included. It might be somewhere. But you can see from the illustrations the sort of period it probably is. But it's just brilliant. 150 illustrations. And I just love these sort of things. They're all very similar style. Now, they're probably all the same artist. No idea. But they're still very impressive. Got this book as well. Amazon's brilliant publishing. I don't know. They always curl. I don't know what... Sometimes I always think, I wish I'd just buy the hardback version. I don't know if there is a hardback copy of this or just buy the Kindle one because I've got so many books now that got this sort of really terrible curl and it's got tons and tons of details. I mean, the book itself is brilliant. It's got a few images, not a huge amount of photos. It's got a few at the front. Let's just quickly show a few examples there. But most of the book is just like scripts, lots and lots of information about storylines that never were, storylines that were changed, tweaked, just fa absolutely fascin fascinating about the lost universe of space 1999. If you're a fan of the show, I think this is a must have. This one, Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage. I really, really, I worked in computing for many years, love computing. And well, 
Lovelace and Babbage. This is just a fascinating read. Brilliant, absolutely superb artwork. Very unusual story and very well done. Really, really one of the best. And this one is from the or Penguin. I was going to say this is a Penguin book. It's real nice quality. I don't know if they've ever brought it out in a hardback edition. I imagine if it did, it would be really, really good. But it's also got some good essays at the front as well. Just really fascinating. Now this one was one of the books that I thought, you know what, I'm not certain I'm going to like this. And as soon as I started reading it, I thought, wow. And this is one. Now I can't even read it. I, Asterios Polyp. I think that's what it was. Something like Asterios. I can't hardly read. <laughs> Asterios Polyp. And it is just fascinating. The artwork is absolutely beautiful. This is by, and I can't even say his name, David Mazzacelli. So it's one of those ones I thought, you know, mm. but I loved it. As soon as I started reading into it, I thought, what a brilliant, totally unique story. Brilliant artwork all the way through. Beautiful cut. Very sort of manga style. It's a very sort of Japanese style. Just, if you want to find a book, this is very unusual, because the thing is, is weird. Also, you can see this is like cardboard, which is very unusual. For, and, well, just wow. Wow is the only word. This is like up in the top 10 of books. Brilliant, brilliant book. This one is very unusual. Now, I don't know anything about this series. I don't know what it is, if it's a game or if it's an actual comic book series, but still, I love these sort of books. Unhuman, The Elephant Men. And this one was one of these uh, ones I bought in Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet had loads. I think it was like 99p or something. It was one of those sale ones. I think, oh, you know what? I get that. Because the thing is, you open it up and it's just full of examples, illustration, all the various character sheets, everything like that. Just beautiful artwork all the way through. Just all the designs. Wow, I mean, just brilliant. 99 pence, it's just, a, even though I have no knowledge whatsoever of the rest of the series, it is the art of, and I can't even read that. Lad, Ladron? I don't know. Ladron, yes, Ladron there. But it is a really interesting book, this one. So definitely worth checking this one out. Unhuman. This one is superb. The Art of Jose Gonzalez. Of course, Warren. Also in UK comics as well, romance ones. You've got Vampirella. Of course, he was the master of Vampirella comics. There's a lot of great bits of Vampirella in here. And also, Romance in the UK. And there's a book coming out soon. A romance book. Massive sort of volume like this that I am really looking forward to. Can't wait for that to come out. This sort of thing. Meet Liberty St. Dare. Loving life and beautifully broke. And also you've got lots and lots of sketches of Vambrella and much, much more, as well as many other stories as well. Lots of Italian, Spanish books, those sort of things. I'd say Italian, probably Italian as well, but certainly Spanish books, commercial work, also covers. This is absolutely lovely. If you can find a copy of this, definitely worth This is it, the premier, very tiny print, the premier Vambrella artist. Well, I guess obviously having Vambrella on the cover probably does give a big clue about that. This one's a good one. I must admit, I because I don't get newspaper strips from the US, Blondie, the Bumstead family history. And it's really, it's full of tons and tons of examples all the way through, just lots and lots. And also information about the series as well, getting married and basically a run through of everything about Blondie. Though it doesn't have really vast amounts of early, early material. Not a huge amount anyway, some examples, but not very much which in a way was a pity because that's what I was half expecting when I got it. But at the same time, find the answer to these questions. Everything else you want to know about Blondie in these pages. So it's still worth checking out this book. So I'm certain Blondie was going quite a few years before that. And like I say, it doesn't really have a huge amount of the early history. Well, I didn't see anyway. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's uh, it was a good book though. This one's excellent. I love Michael Kluter. That's just Absolutely brilliant. This one, Starstruck. Now there's quite a few examples of Starstruck in different volumes. This is the one I've got. Now I don't know what how similar it is to other volumes, but it's still a really unusual read. And it's it's definitely of its time. <laughs> Very weird science fiction little series. Great artwork all the way through. And also some interesting sort of just one pages, basically dead reckoning. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's one of the series that uh, at the time, I mean, when it came out, I read it, and it's nice to get a copy of this, finally. Never had a copy, 
I just thought, you know what? I must get a copy of Starstruck. This one's a really weird one. Harry Harrison. Now, I read quite a lot of Stainless Steel Rat. Love his work. As well as, of course, other ones as well. But this one is a history of sex in science fiction illustration. Not just science fiction. It's also, you could classify, of course, comics. But there's science fiction books. It's, more, it's got lots of examples, obviously, there of Ming the Merciless and those sort of things. Not particularly one you would imagine, but, but you've also got obviously lots from like the wonder stories and all various science wonder stories. Matter of plumbing, as it says there, split the little space pioneer Mobius, of course, just brilliant bit of artwork there. And lots and lots of vamp, uh, not vampirella, well, there is vampirella, strange enough, just going about vampirella, but there's also Barbarella and many other examples, and so on. Loads and loads. This is a fairly well, it's a nice little square bound book. It's very good. So that's that. This one is great. I've loved this book for many, many years. Now, I never had a copy because I always had it in my local library. So I'd always just take it out of my local library. I just never bought it. And of course, then the library closed down. <laughs> oh, I have to buy a book now. New York in the 30s. Just a great little book. And there's also one, New York in the 40s, New York in... No, weirdly, I don't think there's a New York in the 50s or... 70s 80s i'm certain there isn't but but just full of just brilliant brilliant pictures just great all the way all in black and white and i think this is what does it say here yes Ber berenice abbott there's of course other books as well but with all the photography i think but this one is just this is a dover book love dover books used to go to the dover shop in my Maidstone, in london and it was just amazing just it would be nice if there had been one in Maidstone. i would have gone in here then but it was always just brilliant. You just go in there, like piles and piles of, of books of all those sort of things. And I just loved going through there. I'd spend hours and hours going through it. Still, Century 21. This is quite amazing. And yet another one of these uh, sort of sale ones. Three for two. £4.99. I'm not even certain I pay four ninety nine. I think I paid a lot less than that. Sometimes where I've got these, like, you can't get the sticker off. Sometimes you get another sticker on top. You get that sticker off. Of course, you can't get the sticker off without ruining the book. So I've just ended up, but it's got like Thunderbirds, it's got other series as well. I think Zero, yeah, Zero X. Just beautiful artwork, obviously full on colour, most of it. Of course the turnaround says it's in colour. Then there's a black and white page just to, also of course you've got some great covers as well. TV 21, Scarlet Edition, number 166, March 23rd, 2068. Obviously well in advance. It's amazing that this book got book, uh, comic books all the way from about 50 years in the future. Really impressive. Just great artwork. Fireball XL5 is in this as well. And these books are probably going to collapse on me at some point. So if I start, I might pile it here now. This one is just great. I love Vambrella. I've got quite a lot of Vambrella books. I haven't got many of the early ones. So this one, I thought, you know what? I must get the archive edition, at least of the volume one. And some of these ones are quite expensive now, these dynamite ones. I would like to see them coming out in paperback. They recently started, I think, Creepy and Eerie coming out in paperback. So that'd be nice. Hopefully Vambrella, Volume 2, Volume 3, etc. will also come out. Just great. Absolutely superb. Love that bit of pencil sketch there. Neil Adams. And you've got loads of other examples all the way through. Just a beautiful, beautiful book. Vambrella. Really worth checking out. It's a pity these things but they're still reasonably affordable you can find them i've seen quite a few like 50 quid then 45 they're not excessively expensive they haven't got into that totally out of print sort of 600 pound kind of price but still great little collection there i love this one the comic book but it is one of the weirdest books i've ever ever read the front of it is amazing front half is just full of like, weird things like obviously Beano, Film Fun. Then you've got obviously Sensation Comics. So it's mixing a lot of things. Three Musketeers. Also, you've got Crypt of Terror and these sort of lovely titles of indexes and things. And you've got Suicide Squad. So you've got a real mix of unusual stuff. Not the usual conventional ones. Quite often you get books where it's always filled with like Superman. But this one's got like Herbie. I mean, Herbie is one of my favourites. I love Herbie. You've got Werewolf by Night, Magnus, Robot. Now, but then, weirdly, it's got a lovely glossary of terms, which is great. You've got the Beatles, <laughs> real game. But then you've got this index of comic titles. This is just one of the weirdest indexes of all time. I mean, I don't know how comprehensive, if it's every single comic, every single publisher, obviously, you know, 
to when it was actually printed. But it's fascinating. That, but I don't know why I included it. It just seems to be it's just a long list, as if someone's printed the Excel spreadsheet kind of thing in a book, which is just very odd. In many ways, I would have thought it would have been better just to have had a website where you just say, look, just go to this website and look up this index and download it if you want the thing. But let's just have more pages about the comic book history. I would have preferred. But still, this one, it's still a very, very good book. But it's just odd ending. It's just literally pages upon pages of this index. And of course, now, when you've got, obviously, online, GCD, etc., why would you have an index like that? But that's, I guess that's when it was printed. It made sense at the time. The Art of a Comic Book. This is a lovely book. I really love this one. This one's a seven-day loan. <laughs> Hopefully, if it's been... Don't actually say that hasn't been... Um, bah! I assume that they've got rid of it, but anyway, I've ended up with it. Oh, it's withdrawn. So, normally you get stamped and withdrawn over the actual, there. Of course, nowadays, most of them don't have these sort of things anyway, so, because it's 2015, wow. Most of mine, all electronic now, so you've never got a complete list of when they, when they which is always a pity. I always enjoyed looking, get, picking up books, and sometimes you'd pick up one, it'd see like 1980 when it came out, and then literally you would have 1980, then 1993 or something. So we sit in there for 13 years. Maybe people took it off the shelf, but never took it out. But it's just odd. But you, of course, lost that information now. So no one knows other than obviously on the records on the computer and you can't access that. So you got here, hey, look. And it's full of other examples of fighting American Tarzan. So this is a real nice comprehensive book. You've got Gil Kane, of course, all the classic artists. I love that one. You got Gil Kane there. Just I mean, can't beat a bit of Gil Kane. Gil Kane is just my favourite. So much energy, dyna just dynamic all the way. And a hey look again on there. But this one, what else has got? You've got probably, oh, Crumb at the back. Of course, loads, loads. It's full of information. The Art Aesthetic History. Very unusual book. Really worth checking out if you're interested in art, comic book art history. So there's that. Again, that part is getting worse. I really must not put any more to it. This one's a very unusual one. Scoop Scuttle and his pals. But of course, the Basil Wolverton, Wolverton. And just amazing. Absolutely full of just beautiful art. I wouldn't say I was rolling around the floor laughing. Maybe at the time, maybe in the 40s, 50s, etc. This was absolutely... But now you look and think, okay. But it, it certainly was of its time. But still... Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Stan Pan, the makeup man. Big wig, zoots. See, some of these things I have no idea. Zoot snoots, dapper snappers, drip legs, lips, peg legs, weird beards. Let me mould your mush. <laughs> or something like that. Very strange. But still, worth checking this out. This one's a fantagraphic collection. I, I assume this is still in print. It's a, of course, soft paperback. Now, I'm not going to continue with that pile. This one, I love these ones. Harvey Horrors, absolutely superb. This is uh, February, December 1954, and they just published as is, which is good. So you've got here, you've got great little stories, and you've also got the adverts. I love the adverts as well as the... I think that's the trouble with a lot of these completely rest restored, cleaned up sort of series, like the omnibus ones. They've removed all the things that I really loved, all the various bullpen sort of bulletins and all the sort of comic checklists and things uh, but this one this includes everything obviously didn't have all those but it would have been i mean it's got some really daft stuff i mean who goes to comic i mean imagine many kids of like tech maybe they did i don't know eight years old get there get your complete tool sets at the price of a single tool 46 surplus twist drills two dollars i suppose maybe these must have been obviously towards adults because would kids, I mean, I don't know, chisel sets, magnet, well, maybe they were, I'm just, maybe kids did love all this stuff, I don't know. Plier sets, in, insulated combination, cutting, but I mean, would really? Insulated to withstand 5,000 volts? It's not the sort of thing you'd imagine, that it's sort of in the kids' thing. Oh yeah, no, I'm just going to, of course not. That would be nuts. I mean, I think, well, nowadays, of course, you have to have an electrician. That's the key thing. Get a proper trained electrician. But it's just like, I think, oh, you know, but they to put that sort of stuff in the old mill stream. And it's also got things here that collect the complete library from Pierce Art Books. Just lovely. I wish I had more of these. This one's volume four, but I've only got, this is the only Black Cat mystery one I've got. Sadly, it doesn't have the earlier Black Cat ones. 
That would have been brilliant. I love those old black cat ones. I have read Oats over the years, some of those stories, and this, that one was my favourite, which is Tales. And I recently got the best of one, and that was just amazing. Now, it doesn't... Now, this, this is one of the things, that I'm just going to point this one out, because this was such a disappointment. They never released this. Or if they did, please put in the comments below if you know if it exists. I would love to see this, the fantasy and science fiction. I loved fantasy and science fiction. It would have been brilliant to have got a big cover art book of that, and the original cover art for the magazine. And it just never appeared. What happened to it? So strange, but also it's got lots of essays and all those sort of things, and also some original art pages, which is great. This one just come. This just came from the letterbox box about five seconds ago, so I thought, oh, I'll put it on a pile, just because I can. Radio Times, the 60s. Oh, I love the Radio Times, well, I did back in the 60s and 70s. I didn't buy it this year, the Christmas one, I thought, well, I it's on, on the computer now, on the TVs. <laughs> Why would you want it? I don't know. This part of the nostalgia. I just love the old Radio Times. Radio Times and Sound. Don't remember that one. And Sound. Was there a magazine called Sound? I guess it was to be. Radio Times and Sound. Over the years, I've had quite a lot of Radio Times, obviously, when they came out as well, but also ones I bought. But it's like compact. You've got BBC Autumn Plans. And this week's Radio Times, of course, got Doctor Who, Match of the Day, you've got Duke Ellington there, Jazz 625. Some of these shows, of course, Jazz 625, I think they've been putting on, oh, some anyway, on BBC Four. Of course, you've got the good old World Cup, and you've got that lovely, look at that, Radio One cover there. Just superb. Nice little book. I don't know if there's a Radio Times, the 70s. If there is, I probably will try and get a copy of that, but I haven't seen it. It finishes on to, on the Beatles, of course. Strange enough for the 60s. This one. What's this? Ooh, this is just classic. Tales of Terror. And for any EC comic fan, this is a must-have. Really, really the book. It's definitive book. It's got, well, I don't think no book's particularly definitive, but this has got so many examples, and it's got, got an index in it as well, the Tiny Top Comics, as if you want... Of, some people do. Some people love collecting all the pre-trends. This one, Land of the Lost. You've got Gunfighter. Now, some of these have recently come out in Dark Horse collections. I don't know if that was... It was the Gunfighter one. But there's some of them haven't. You've got Happy Hula, Hula Hands, as well as many others. And, of course, it's got Moon Girl. Tons and tons of examples. Loads and loads of essays. Loads and loads of interviews. Also, of course, the actual books themselves, the classic books, the Horns of Fear, incredible science fiction. Just a beautiful book. Absolutely brilliant. Tales of Terror. I was so over the moon when I actually found this at a comic mart for next to nothing. And I thought, oh, that is a book. And it was in hardback as well. I thought, oh, that is good. Still. This one's lovely. Hal Foster. I love his artwork. Absolutely brilliant. Now, it doesn't have a vast amount of artwork in it, unfortunately. But it's still an interesting read. And you've got there, Hal Foster's work there. We Ate Ape. Strange enough. But it's got, it has got some art. But it's not a huge amount, as much as it probably could have been. But still, very interesting. Now, who should buy this one? Now, I think, the, oh, Vanguard. I have to say, I am not 100% fan of Vanguard ones. I don't know why. There's just something about Vanguard books that they seem to, they could be so much better they just seem to be, maybe other people might have a different, completely different point of view. Maybe they think Vanguard books are the best. But personally, I've always found that ones I've had Vanguard, not so, even though it was a Will Eisner nominee, I've never been such a fan of them. It's got, I've got, over the years, loads of them, but I don't know. Each of their own, I guess, on those. Hermes is another one. Hermes Press. So Hermes Press. That's another one that I just never 100% with. Some, like Fantagraphics, IDW, bring out just amazing books. Dynamic, loads of great, massive tomes that I just love, full of every zillion bitches. And then you get others, just that don't seem to have just... They've got a lot of text, which I suppose is, if you want that, nice to have both, actually. But this one's quite impressive. Hellboy, this one, 25 years of covers, a lot of covers. And, of course, it's covers without all the text. So it's always great. I love covers especially ones without the text. be honest, what would have been nice would have been to have put the covers as well with all the text at the back. Just a sort of 10 pages, sort of very small maybe, so you could actually see with all the different... But unfortunately, they haven't gone for that, so you just got the... But the artwork is just absolutely amazing. Mike Nana, incredible artist, and the covers 
obviously I used a lot of black, lots of red, and other colours as well, of course. But it's just brilliant. Really worth checking out that one. Hellboy, 25 years of covers. Probably my favourite of all the Judge Dread books. This one is the complete Judge Dread, uh, Judge Caligula. And I love the story. Brilliant artwork, Brian Bolland. I think Brian Bolland's in here. I'm certain he is. Just flicking through. But still, loads of great artists, but also just, yes, Brian Bolland there. Just great, great stories. Arts robot, Brian Bolland. I knew there was Brian Bolland. But they are just superb. I love Roman history. So Caligula and the stories, those things, always fascinating. And just being done as this. I remember getting the series at the time. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. And it's always been a favourite. There's a few other ones as well. Other series that I really like. Of course, uh, the Judge Death, of course, is another one that comes to mind. But this one is probably my number one favourite. This one is a classic. Absolutely brilliant. Penguin classic of comics. Just love this. This is one of the earliest sort of, for me anyway, I mean, obviously, there are probably books in the 40s and 50s that came out. But for me, this one, George Berry, Alan Aldridge, just masterpiece. Absolutely. And it's, it even starts with some Egyptian art. You know you've got a book, a history of comics, when it starts with Egyptian art. And I think Egyptian art, those sort of things, just great. Holgarth, just superb as well. These sort of illustrations. Now, I don't know which one it is. There's a load. Of, there's loads of these. And, of course, all these sort of magazines back in the Victorian period. Just fascinating. I wish there were more books of these sort of things, but fortunately they're not. These sort of Dan Leno, 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 comics, comics journal. Cool. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it, for a title, for a comic, but still. And it was every Tuesday, and this is volume number one, number one, and 1898. Half a penny. Half an old penny. Film fun. And it also goes through, of course, Little Nemo. You've got other ones here, all the way through. Henry. Of course, Mad and those sort of ones. Was that Mad? That's probably. Oh no, it's uh, not Brandeck. I was going to say, be weird if it was Mad because it's got Silver Surfer in it. But anyway, it's similar sort of style, sort of thing. Crazy at the bat. And of course, you've got this one. I love this. Captain America, original, of course, back in the 40s. Not a huge amount of. You've got a bit like Captain America there. Not so much sort of like recent Marvel. Obviously, recent being 1970s, recent Marvel. But here, it's it also has got lots of sort of, well, romance ones and all those sort of, just everything. This is a fascinating book. Really, a must-have for anybody's collection. If you're interested in the history of comics, I think this is one. Now, obviously, it's been superseded in many ways, but at the same time, it's got a lot of examples in here that are really worth checking out. So that is a great one. I love this one. This one, Happy Days, 100 Years of Comics. And again, this has got lots of these. Half Penny, Picture Fun. You've got Brooms, Al Willy, or, or Willy, I don't know. <laughs> it said. Boys and Girls Own. You've got Film Fun, obviously Lauren Hardy there. These are just beautiful, these books. There's just, unfortunately, just not enough of these sort of books. So Chips, and of course, lots of Christmas ones as well. Of course, at the time, it's Christmas. So sometimes I will. It's obviously, of, of the, I don't know when it was. This is World War Two. So it's very, very different times. You've got war comics as well. New funnies. Obviously, that's probably very much like the American one there. Banned, oh, banned by wartime import restrictions. And of course, you've got another Christmas one there as well. So lots and lots of great covers as well as comics as well. This one's a very unusual one. Playboy Trump, the complete collection. Nothing to do with Trump. They're probably, <laughs> obviously, oh, Trump has been mentioned. No, it was Trump and it's got Harvey Kurtzman. Absolutely amazing. This one is weirdly, and I don't know if there's a obviously there's a volume one, Essential Kurtzman Volume One. Probably this one's volume two. But this one is the complete collection of Trump. But it's got some great illustrations, lots of all the various details about the long lost volume, sorry, issue three that never came out. Now the humour's fine. I mean it's nothing I was sort of game rolling around the floor laughing at. Maybe in the 50s, probably people loved it, but well, they probably didn't because it didn't last. I don't know. I don't know what the, all the reasons. But like musical variations, lots and lots of examples. Again, you know, if you're in a mood for particularly a certain thing, it's, yeah, not maybe everyone's. But it's still good. Still a good book. And like I say, I've got lots and lots of examples how obviously building up for the, I love his flexogram. I think it's called flexogram or something. Oh, yeah. Created this sort of flexogram design. 
which is quite an unusual. Now, that would have been a very unusual comic. Not really a comic book, but at the same time, it's obviously got lots of illustrations, various people, Wally Wood, etc. So it's a very worth checking out book. And now ooh, to The Art of Todd McFarlane. I'm not a mega fan of McFarlane. I love his work sometimes. Some of it, not so, and he got lots of it early examples. You got here Incredible Hulk. I think that was his first one. Certainly a very early one at Marvel. You got Amazing Spider Man. I mean, it's quite, I enjoyed when it came out, Spider Man. I remember thinking, wow, this one, especially like that, the old Hulk one, well, Spider. There was a load of good issues with Captain America, of course, and Spawn, New Mutants. There's lots of examples. So, this is a really, really nice sort of image comics, Marvel comics, and much, much more. Quite a fascinating read. You've got lots of models and things as well. The Art of Todd McFarlane. This is a soft paperback one, or soft back, I suppose you would call it. It's good, very enjoyable. It's also got forward by Stan Lee as well. The Devil's in the Details. We're checking it out, but at the same time, I would not say I am the most, I've got one or two comics of McFarlane, so that one. Now this is amazing. Will Elder, the mad playboy of art. This is full of just so many, obviously mad, all the, and tons of brilliant artwork all the way through it. Page after page after page, beautiful illustrations and artwork. And uh, something like this sort of thing. I love this bit with futurism, cubism, all the sort of his ideas. <laughs> I don't know who actually saying that, who wrote it, but still abstract, abstractionism. Can't even say that word. That's a, or frescoism. Yeah. Is there anything called? Was it called frescoism? <laughs> I've never heard of that word. Anyway, whatever. But it's still mixed campaigns are there, like Diego uh, Rivera, Rivera, even. But still. Fascinating, surrealism and others. Such a weird isms, isms are always. But you've got loads of great examples there. Maybe Marvel comic isms or DC isms or image isms. No, maybe not. And this one, this is the last one of the pile. Now, I don't know why it's in the pile, but it was actually on the top of the pile. It wasn't the bottom, because that was the bottom, of course, the whole thing would have collapsed. All of the Marvels. Now, unfortunately, it says here, an amazing voyage into Marvel's universe and 27,000 superhero comics that he read. But it doesn't include all, but it does include lots and lots of examples of brilliant stories. Fantastic Four, number 19, Doctor Strange, 53. And it sort of goes through it in a very unusual way. I thoroughly enjoy this. And I must admit, it's one of those books you can pick up and think, oh, you know what? Thor 318. You think, well, that sounds a great little story. I must go rush off and get an issue of that. And that's basically what I used this book for. Lots of Jungle Action 24, sort of unusual one there. Second, oh, second Black Panther. Probably got that now in the recent, was it in the recent Penguin ones? Maybe it wasn't, I don't know. All new Savage She-Hulk, June 2009. Lots of issues that I've never read. And when you read it, of course, you think, oh, you know what? That would be worth checking out. So that is my first, first pile or slash shelf run through of all the books. I hope you found this of interest. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. It's always great to hear from you. Have you got any of these books? Will you be buying any of these books? I certainly loved reading many of them. I haven't read every single bit, every single, and I don't read every single page of some of them. I mean, some, but they, they're books that I pick up and read through, and I might read through a couple of chapters, and then I'll put it back down again, and then I'll come back to it at a later time. So I'm never, sometimes I can find sort of bookmarks in it and it's obviously been there for about five or six years and you think, maybe I'm never going to get around to reading that. But still, you know, you just can't read everything. But at the same time, it's great to dip into all these things. Great books. And uh, happy Christmas.